fanboys and fangirls, we are in the Christmas mode and we start the countdown to Christmas. But coming up on today's episode of Technoid, we are going to talk all about the big three in the cellular world. We're going to start with T-Mobile as they are starting to make some stride in their 5G continuation. But there's also some things you have to know about that as the competition is starting to catch up. Also on today's episode, Verizon is launching more access to their in-home internet in terms of 5G. We got more ex explanations and more news about that. And lastly, if you haven't heard, AT&T Fiber 300, their cheapest plan has come out and everybody's raving about it. And I'm gonna talk about it more in this episode and why it's a really good deal for those who run on the Death Star. All that on today's episode, so stay tuned. So story number one, the main story, well, let's talk about T-Mobile. Now, yeah, as you guys know T-Mobile, hey, how's it going? The hell, what the, the, the where the hell did you hey, come from? I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Well, what do you mean, what am I doing here? I've always been sitting in the background editing your videos, yeah, waiting for you to talk about T-Mobile. I thought I killed you like now two, you know three episodes ago. Now you in this channel, but I'm still just as important as Lug Nuts, who you yeah. haven't yeah, brought no, back No, 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 you ain't talking T-Mobile. We're going to talk about get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, uh... Bye everyone, bye bye, and uh, you better pay me for editing right, videos. Put, get out! Out! Ugh. Characters. Alrighty, as I was saying, so T-Mobile, as you know, is going through a little bit of a phase right now. Uh, they've basically been on carrier for a while, and now we're kind of trying to figure out what are they exactly. But it seems the one thing that they are still continuing to do is heavy marketing on 5G. And according to several reports, it seems that T-Mobile is continuing their efforts in rural America by expanding their, quote, real 5G across the nation. Now, according to the article, it says here that T-Mobile is continuing to pave the way for 5G capabilities by also expanding their coverage in the next two years. According to several areas, they want to blanket over 250 million Americans with true, that's the key word, true 5G coverage with mid-band next year, and then cover 300 million by the end of 2023 as the rollout continues to rural areas in America. Now, that all sounds really good and well, but a lot of people are also asking, what about 2.5 gigahertz? You know, you're looking at mid-band and also they haven't really been pushing ultra capacity, like, you know, sub six, um, they're more focused on that. It seems millimeter wave is not a priority. And we could also see that in another article that T-Mobile is launching 2.5 gigahertz 5G carrier aggregation in several different locations. One both being Hawaii. Now, as you guys know, Hawaii is part of the United States, obviously. And being that it's one of the islands down under, they kind of want to expand to all the islands in Hawaii. They are going to give the carrier aggregation from 600 megahertz and 2.5 gigahertz to prioritize the downlink and high performing channels to uplink and extend coverage with T-Mobile's quote, real 5G. Now that's the kind of the key word they've been using for a while, real 5G, which kind of makes you wonder, is the 5G they're even using real, which kind of is a little head scratcher. But another weird thing is the why this is all important, why I'm talking about it is because even though T-Mobile has been very, very good with marketing 5G and they've been doing some very good promotions and they've honestly been trying to continue this expansion, they are starting to get caught up with as Verizon is pushing uh, ultra wideband and they're pushing their version of 5G. AT&T is, is now distributing their fiber and 5G as well. And the competition is continuing to expand in such big ways that even though they will have somewhat of an advantage because of the merger with Sprint, they really got to continue their expansion because I've been very critical of T-Mobile and I've actually been saying this many times. I was a former customer of them. I just could not use them anymore. The signal was just really bad. And a lot of my family has T-Mobile and when they came to, you know, when they came to New York and they're in Florida, it felt no different. It was just really not that good. So they have to continue their expansion and I'm really glad to see that they are trying to expand it. Their goal is 2023 is the end game for real 5G. But if you guys know anything about cellular right now, we're still in the experimental phase. It's not really true, true 5G, but we're almost there. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get there. But I wanted to take a moment to also acknowledge T-Mobile and ask the question, what are you guys doing with your company? Because I really don't know what their position is right now. I understand that the marketing scheme is working for a lot of people, and I understand that they are continuing with home internet, that they are trying to be a disruptor in the industry, but I don't really understand their marketing aspects because 
long time ago, they got rid of YouTube TV. Oh no, I'm sorry. They got rid of T-Vision in favor of YouTube TV at a heavy discount. But then just today I got a video upload from Seamable Tech talking about how they're releasing T-Vision hubs, which is basically a Chromecast skin. So what's going on, T-Mobile? Are you trying to be the big 5G player? Are you still trying to figure out T-Vision or Uncarry or whatever? I have no idea, but I, all I can hope for is that they continue to expand and they continue to get better. That is all I can hope, and uh, yeah, that's really about it for T-Mobile. Alrighty, story number two, let's talk about Verizon. Now, Verizon, as you know, has been making some stride in their 5G performance with nice high speeds with ultra wideband if you have a new iPhone or Samsung Galaxy. And also, they have made some big efforts with home internet using that technology. And they have just continued to roll out their expansion of the home internet because according to several articles, Verizon has launched their new home internet system in Florida and in most notably Jacksonville and several other areas. Now, taking a look at what they're doing, basically the signal and broadcast is over Wi-Fi. The 5G Home offers the downlink of one gigabyte with 300 megabits of upload speeds. And the data is of course unlimited, no contracts, you know all this about it. But one of the other things that they're continuing to do is increase unlimited data pricing and also offer options for home users. So for example, the pricing will start at $50 a month for Verizon customers qualifying with mobile plans, $70 a month with customers without a plan. You can also get business intels. You have other options and flexibility. So it seems what they're trying to do is offer different varieties and options and different criteria for people to get their home internet for business at home. But if you use Verizon Fios and you have fiber optic, that's just honestly overkill because that's the perfect amount of Verizon internet you're going to need. But it's nice to see that the cellular technology is expanding with Verizon and I'm really glad that they're continuing their push with 5G home internet. But my only criticism with Verizon is that there are still some areas that don't have access to that but have some strong LTE services. So I would recommend as an option, as a backup, to also offer home internet at 4G LTE for those areas that don't have the 5G capabilities because they still have to build out the towers and if you guys have been there in Florida, signal really isn't aggregated really good down there. So uh, definitely get on that Verizon. It's not just T-Mobile either, it's all carriers. So I think AT&T works good in uh, Florida, but that's that. And last story, the final story, let's talk about this AT&T Fiber 300 plan. Now, there have been a lot of big craze about it. The Death Star seems to be making some turns because Big Blue has actually made a very good plan. Very good entry plan. According to the report, it says here that AT&T has made their cheapest plan the fastest plan you're ever going to get. It's budget friendly, high speed, etc. The cost and speed are the two most important things here. And the way that they were able to do it with their Fiber 300 plan is by basically giving these speeds a prioritization and also being able to keep the price within a certain extent. Their plans start at $35 a month. You can get download and upload speeds of 300 megabits per second, which honestly for the general consumer is more than plenty because most people don't even care about a gigabit. But if you are a heavy user, this is not the plan for you. But taking a look at the value that comes with the plan though, it is tough to pass up because on top of everything that you get, you will also consider the condition of coming with AT&T home internet and they break down that the Fiber 300 will also give you 12 months of equipment fee and price fees reduced and actually might even waive some of that if you go with their AT&T home internet. So there is a little bundle going on there that might give you some value. And of course, I'm pretty sure if you try hard enough, you could probably persuade a customer service to give you probably HBO Max. I don't know. I'm just throwing out an idea. But the response to this plan has been very positive from everybody, saying that the Death Star has finally given its customers a very good option, and for those that are just looking to get into AT&T, a very good starting way. And I always prioritize nice entry-level plans as a way to start, and then you continue to go your way up as you find what works. And this Fiber 300 plan seems to be the way to go because it looks like it's really got enough for consumers to munch on, it's got enough speed and bandwidth for people to continue using, and most of all, it just does the job well it seems. So I actually for one would like to see this plan maybe put into good use. Sneebold Tech, you better get on that boy because I saw you order something from the Death Star. Now, we gotta wait and see how it does perform in real time, but based on its schematics and based on what everybody's saying, and when I say schematic, basically just on the breakdown I meant to say, it does look like this plan is gonna be a hit with consumers, so let's see how AT&T does this. Now, as Emperor Palpatine would always say, 
the Death Star is fully operational. <laughs> oh man, I really gotta stop watching Star Wars too much. And that's for today's episode of Technoid. Now guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you disliked the video, you can hit the dislike button. That helps with my videos as well. As always everyone, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great day guys. Take care, stay safe, have a good day, and peace.